Welcome to Quick Shots, a short format traditional archery podcast, where we introduce you to some of the world's most influential traditional archers, and occasionally, some random dudes. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Quick Shots. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification. We upload a new episode every Wednesday, and they just keep getting better and better. If you or someone you know is an interesting trad archer, leave a comment below. We'd love to get you on the show. If you want to support the channel, head on over to the tradlifearchery.com. We have toques, we have hats, we have mugs, just a bunch of stuff over there. And anything you buy goes to support this channel. We do really appreciate it. Hey, everyone, and welcome back to Quick Shots. I'm your host, Mick Chambers, and we're here with Becca Garris. Becca, how are you? I'm good today. How are you? Really good. Thanks for joining. You know, I appreciate it. You have such a massive following on um, on Instagram and you're a trad shooter. It's just, it's it's awesome to see such great success, especially bring the fact that you bring so much goodness to the trad community. I love it. Now, now what do you, what do you attribute your success to? Um, first, thank you. Um, that's, that's kind of a hard question. Um, I don't always feel successful, I guess. So I guess that's why it's a hard question. Um, I feel like I'm just always, I'm still a beginner at trad and I'm still learning everything, but, um, yeah, I don't know. That's a, that's kind of a tough question. No, no. Hey, it's, a question it's a, for I, mean, me. I think I can tell you what I think it is. I think, you know, just, uh, looking at your Instagram and the, the great pictures you post and with your little one there, I mean, it's just a, it is a very cute and, uh, uh, uh admirable position that you put, you know, uh, female archers in right and I think a lot of uh, a lot of us look up to you as you know this is this is kind of what traditional archery is all about it's about family it's about being there and you kind of embody that in in one kind of person if you will one one Instagram account but I know you're much more than thank that you. right thank so, you yeah and I think you're, you're you're doing a fantastic job you know raising your your young one so and uh and and you're a hunter and you live off the land and you you do a lot of great hunting and so people are excited to see your success I think right well I I, I would like to think so <laughs> now that that might that success might come with a little bit of um uh criticism have you ever got any sort yeah. of criticism yes I have gotten a lot of criticism um, years before I even started trad, I would get criticism from, um, when I posted pictures of coyote hunting and things like that, even just being a woman hunter, people are very, very critical of that in itself. And then once I started taking my daughter along with me, people didn't really like to see that, which I mean, it's, I understand that it might be shocking, but it wasn't years ago. That wouldn't be something that was shocking. It's just shocking because it's in today's age i guess right 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 no no absolutely not i mean how else would you get food you can't just leave your kids sitting out yeah, yeah. No, i mean it'd be crazy it would be crazy that would be crazy that'd be crazy stuff. hey and i know one of the things that is really interesting in your bio on instagram and i i i'd like everyone to kind of you know stop go over to your bio and, and just there's a there's a link uh in there to an article that you wrote yes a recent recent article i did for outdoor life for outdoor life and and wow yes. it's good it's insightful Thank you. It's well written Thank you. it is uh it's everything that kind of again what you're embodying but really basically you're telling people who yeah. there's, a, there's a responsibility a social responsibility what you put yeah, on I, yeah i think there really is and a lot of people don't really think of that they just think about getting all their, their likes and follows and everything and you have it has to be about more than that it does, right? It does. It has to be about your lifestyle, right? And exactly. And setting a good example for other people, even not necessarily anti-hunters or people that don't know anything about hunting, but the next generation or people that may be interested in getting into hunting themselves. What I really liked about it is that you didn't call out people who don't like hunting. Like, I hate hunting. I'm never do it. I'm not, you know, I don't like you for hunting. You didn't call those people out. You just said, look at it we do have a responsibility that you know it doesn't yeah. help our our story if we're posting stuff that's unethical right yeah exactly yeah and no. surprisingly that was i got a lot of criticism from that article really yeah from, from not, so yeah it was from other hunters um 
some people just disagreed with me in general, which is fine. I knew that I would get that. And then a lot of it was people just read the headline and they didn't, <laughs> they didn't read the actual article and they got a bunch of messages from that. And I told them, you know, go back and actually read the article Yeah, and then message me again. It was good. Uh, again, go Thank to, you. go to your Instagram page, go to Becca's uh, Instagram page click on her bio and then go in, in uh, well, first of all, follow her while you're there. If you don't, haven't already, I don't know anyone that has not <laughs> followed Becca. <laughs> I, I literally don't know anyone that doesn't know who you are. Uh, I don't think it, it would be strange if I came across a trad hunter that or trad. So, uh, <laughs> so that's good. And you brought a lot of goodness to the trad community. So we really appreciate that. You know, really, Thank really. You. Cool. Hey, let's talk a little about a little bit about you and 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 your trad archery journey. Like, how did okay. what's the origin story there? So, I was I when I first started out hunting, I was ten years old, and I started out with just gun hunting with my dad. And then I was sixteen. I started hunting with a compound bow, and then about six ish years ago, I kind of felt like. I wasn't challenging myself anymore. So I wanted to try traditional archery and that's what kind of got me into it. And, um, I was very inspired by Fred bear, you know, all those old black and white pictures you see of people hunting the trad. And, um, my dad always told stories about how he hunted with a traditional bow when he was a kid. So it was just really inspiring. And at first I thought, you know, I'd probably never be able to do it, but I wanted to try it anyway. And I ended up obviously loving it and I don't see myself ever going back to anything else well that's yeah I hope not I hope not that's great uh and and it's a harder way to do things and you have to practice definitely it is yeah it's definitely now I do want to say one thing um I won't go back to any other type of bow hunting but I will probably start gun hunting with a flintlock oh fine I used to do that as a kid that's cool um, and it's essentially the traditional bow hunting of the gun world. And it's real, it's really fun. So I would probably do that, um, during the gun week here in Ohio, just for something different. That's really good. That's cool. I mean, I, I, I don't think anyone has problems with that. <laughs> you know? No, it's, it's, it's really, it's really cool. And my, my dad actually said, um, he was going to gift me his, he has a, a hawk and a 50 cal that he always hunted with. And that's what I'll use hopefully this year, but we'll see. That, that's cool but before we get on to that or, or move on to something like that let's let's talk about what your rig is right now what what's your preferred setup and you know what arrows what bow you're shooting uh love to know okay so right now i'm shooting the tomahawk kiska which is it used to be made by three rivers and it's it's still out of three rivers archery in indiana um i shoot cedar shaft arrows and I have 125 green Woodsman Elites on the end of those right now. I kind of wanted to go all the way traditional and go to the wooden arrows and everything. That's, yeah, that's pretty cool. How much weight are you pulling? Uh, 45 pounds. Holy jumping. Are you kidding me? That's awesome. I started out with 40 pounds the first year and I kind of felt that I could do more. And, you know, once you practice and... I can easily pull 45 pounds. I could probably bump up to 50, but I don't really feel like I need to. I feel like that's more than enough to do anything that I'm hunting here. Yeah, you're a better you're, you're, you're a better huntsman than me because uh, I'm like 40, 46 pounds is my that's what I hunt deer with, and that's it. I don't get too much heavier than that. So and then when I, I shot a compound, I shot 60 pounds. Oh wow. Yeah. That's a lot. But, traditional archery is so different you don't have any let off or anything it's all it's all you so it's very you, different okay so so tell me let's dig a little bit deeper so are you using um three under or you split finger i shoot split finger i tried shooting three under i shoot split finger and i shoot a glove i've tried a tab many times and for the life of me i can't get the hang of it I know some people are, you just can't, I mean, especially split finger. It's, it's a little bit, yeah. unless you're yeah. Olympic recurve or something like that. So then you're shooting, I'm going to say instinctive. Yes. <laughs> yes. Cool. Which is also another controversial thing in the traditional archery world. 
I don't know why. I don't know. I mean, you know, I've had Jeff Cavanaugh on here, and he, and actually Jeff is right is in the midst of. I'm gonna bust him on this. He's in the middle of. He's supposed to be writing a book around you know instinctive shooting. So I don't know if you know Jeff Cavanaugh. He's a he's yeah. A, I um. I follow him on Instagram. He follows me back and we message back and forth once in a while. And I remember talking to him about instinctive shooting. It's nice when I find someone else that is an instinctive shooter. Yeah. I mean, I think, I hope I kind of feel like everyone started off that way, or at least you had to. Yeah. I feel like that too. Yeah. Everybody's usually an instinctive or gap shooter. And so, so you, how long again, sorry, remind me, you, you probably said, it's, how long you've been, um, doing traditional archery um I think six years because it was yeah six almost six years i think it's <laughs> a sorry somewhere around there <laughs> and so exclusively you've been you've been just using it for hunting or have you you know do you shoot tournaments do you care about that stuff do you um you not one? really i shoot we have a local 3d course here that i'll go and shoot once in a while but i haven't really shot any actual tournaments or anything yet with traditional i used to when i had a compound but and then i said i was going to last year and then everything got shut down for covid and i never yeah. things are still kind of up in the air with reopening so now what kind of um sorry what what do you hunt when you hunt when you wait uh, i hunt in ohio i will shoot <laughs> okay. I will hunt anything, um, mainly deer, turkey, squirrel, and rabbit. But I shot a couple coyotes too, and some dove, and that's about it. Now you shoot dove. How do you shoot dove? I mean, that's, that's, that's <laughs> yeah, those are like lucky shots when other seasons are open and you're walking along and you see a dove, and you end. Up, I end up shooting it. <laughs> do you do you cook and eat everything that you shoot? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, with the exception of coyotes, and I do. I do bowfish as well. Oh, that's cool. And do you have a big property out there or something? Or are you hunting on private land? Or are you? No. Um, currently, we have five acres, but we're actually in the midst of selling it and moving to a smaller area. And then we hope in a couple of years to sell and buy our dream property with and build our dream house hunt. That's cool. That's cool. Um, and does your does your husband does he hunt as well? Is he a hunter? He does. Yes, he does. Um, he doesn't have as much time as I do, but yeah, he does. What's he, what's he do? Uh, he is a police officer. That's awesome. And currently, currently on night shift. So, <laughs> so you get some peace and quiet. Is that what you're saying right now to do this interview? Yeah. Well, yeah. actually today he was, he was actually day shift today of all, of all days, but yeah, he's usually night shift. So, Hey, so, so what does he think of your, how successful you are? <laughs> Um, well, it's funny. Um, when we met, he didn't really have social media. He had social media, but he was never really honest. We had no idea who I was. And I liked that because a lot of people, when they, when they know who I am on social media, they have all these like preconceived notions as to who I am and what I'm going to be like. And since he didn't, that was nice. Um, but yeah, he thinks it's cool. I don't, I don't think he really thought it was that cool at first, but yeah. now he, it's really cool it is it is really cool tell him we told you to say that to him it's really cool it's really, really <laughs> you're helping again i i know i'm sounding like a broken record but you're helping out the traditional community so much and putting a spotlight on it and again you're doing it ethically you're doing it very wholesomely and you know you kind of embody a lot of those principles that we've been trying to say for years in traditional archery and in traditional hunting you know um, you know, any sort of single string. So, you know, it's really good to, to have someone like you as an ambassador. So uh, we're very proud of you anyway. And thanks for getting on the show. <laughs> Thank uh, you. So, so did you, have you had any sort of training? Like, did anyone, was your, was your dad, did your dad show you how to shoot or did you just pick it up? And um, they go, yeah. No, I ended up just picking it up and kind of winging it. Um, I didn't know anyone that hunted traditional archery and my dad lives 600 miles away so I just kind of had to look up stuff online and go buy pictures and I actually had a bunch of Fred Bear books and stuff and a lot of his photos I used for my form which I know everyone's form is different but yeah I just kind of dove right in by myself 
No, I've seen your form. I mean, again, you have a, a bunch of pictures up there of you hunting and walking and shooting and form looks great. I mean, you do a lot of crazy shots, like kneeling down and stuff like that. So. <laughs> yeah, I like to mix it up. It makes it fun to do stuff yeah. like that. Are, are you are you shooting a lot every day? It just seems like, um, or is that just me? This it's time of year, I try to shoot at least once every day. Um, I feel like during hunting season, I have to to prepare myself, even if it's just one arrow a day. Um, it helps build my confidence. And if I don't shoot for a while, I kind of suck. So I feel like I have to consistently get that practice in. Yeah. You, I mean, I think you, well, it, from your article, I feel you feel the same way as most of us is it's, it's not ethical to shoot without practice. Right? Yeah, exactly. And it's funny. Cause when I was a kid and I shot a compound, um, I wasn't allowed to hunt unless I practiced. My dad wouldn't let me go unless I consistently practice not necessarily every day but often enough that i could you know i was a good shot yeah he's a good man uh that's exactly the, yeah. that's, the, that's the advice you need to be given um yes you know, i agree your, your kids um so are you getting ready for turkey are you doing turkey or yes um less than two weeks away is opening day and this is the first year since i've lived in ohio that it's on a saturday so that should be interesting what does that mean? I don't, I don't, I don't get that. What does so that mean? usually, usually our season is roughly four weeks long and it has always started on a Monday and this year it's starting on a Saturday, which means there's going to be a lot more people out. Oh, right. On, um, on opening day. Yes. I actually don't hunt public land with Isabella because people always get shot on public yeah. land. Turkey. Well, Turkey not always. Here. Okay, not always, not always, but I mean, it's 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 more it's scarier, it's riskier. That's interesting. Yes. And see now, public land deer hunting here, it's awesome. It's so quiet. I've never seen another hunter in the woods. And then turkey season, it is literally a war zone. It's crazy. Um, and now, do they mix the? Um, well, I guess it's it, it's open season, right? It's like it, it's usually shotgun. Usually, most people can shotgun. Yes. Um, you can use a shotgun. You can okay. use archery equipment crossbows are legal here um you can only hunt until noon but we do have some archery designated areas so there are some areas you can go on public land that are only archery oh and that's in ohio that's pretty interesting yes mm -hmm. yeah it's pretty i really don't know if that's the same in kansas or not i you know i haven't even really looked into it i uh yeah not not all states have it but i'm glad that I'm glad that our state does. It makes me feel a little safer. Yeah, yeah a little safer. You know, yeah. people don't follow rules. Uh, Becca, I don't know if you know know that or not. <laughs> people do not follow these rules. That's why all that purple spray paint is all over the place. You know, and, and you just, ugh, you know, are you yeah. are you hunting from a blind or? Um, I don't know. Since Isabella, with my husband on night shift, it's really hard for me to hunt without taking Isabella. So she will most likely be with me 99% of my hunting season. And she hasn't liked blinds. She doesn't want to hunt with blinds. She cries. So we have been run and gun with the bow. Oh. I see. If, okay. I cannot wait to see if you get a turkey. And fingers crossed you do. Because, I mean, turkey, you know, we think of, for people who aren't hunters, we think of turkey as dumb, stupid, whatever. They're tough. <laughs> really smart, especially with a kid. I went with her last year. We did not get. I did not get one. No, they're still they're they're tricky. I mean, as soon as they, they see, are, they any, any see type of everything. Movie, they see everything. You can't even yeah, have. I mean, that's why it's so much easier with a shotgun. You can just kind of as they're oh, yeah. kind of be up here, you know, as yeah. opposed to a uh, archery. You got to do this whole movement. Yeah, and, and they're gone. You know, they're they're flying. Yeah. And, and you guys, I imagine, have the same rules we have. You can't catch them in flight. You can't. Catch them roosting um i'm actually not 100 sure of ohio's laws on shooting on the roost um it's not something i would personally ever do so i've never actually looked up to see if it's legal yeah. well someone will know someone will leave a comment below and say hey, <laughs> yeah, do that, sure. Becca. don't don't be yeah. doing that, don't be doing that. <laughs> well i wouldn't do it anyway so it doesn't really matter it's funny well, I remember when i was a kid the first year i turkey hunted i didn't get a turkey and it was nearing the end of the season and we walked upon a gobbler. He was roosted in a tree. And my dad said, 
do you want to shoot? And I, it was a test. It was, he would never have let me shoot, but I said no. That's good. So. Well, that's good. That's good. It, and I, I've just minded no, no. that you're, so are you a good cook then? It, it, I mean, I'm not um, saying that a sec, and by the way, before anyone gets on me about being sexist, I'm saying that because I don't think that I personally could cook some of the stuff you're saying that you shoot and cook like squirrel and rabbit. I just, it would taste terrible. I think, I think anyway, for me, I, I like to think I'm a good cook. My husband, my husband says I'm a good cook. Um, I like to cook. So I cook a lot of, a lot of different things. Now, have you had success cooking turkey? Because <laughs> I have not. Yes, I have. Share, share me a secret. Give me a secret on, on cooking turkey. Um, crock pot is usually really good okay. or you cut it into smaller pieces and deep fry it or if you grind it it makes really good burgers or you can pound it out thin and then it's really tender oh, okay yeah because otherwise yeah there's there's all sorts of tricks you can do to make it taste good now some of it is going to be tough anyway it depends on the bird but yeah you can you can make it good to eat yeah okay i'll, I'll take your word for it i i, I <laughs> I haven't been a, I haven't been turkey hunting in years, so I, I don't think I'm going to take it back up again. But I, I do I you know I enjoy venison, right? And I and Mike yeah, definitely awesome. enjoy venison. So there's so much to do with that. But yeah, uh, you know, of animals. Yeah, no, that's exciting. Do you have any sort of uh, people that you currently look up to in terms of your archery career or ask people for advice? I know you mentioned Kavanaugh, but is there anyone else? That- um, I mean, that's a tough question. I wish I would have like prepared myself yeah, that's before this. I mean, I know. you don't want to. See I mean, there are people. Out, right? There are people in the community that I will message and ask questions. But off the top of my head, um, here's someone that I have messaged specifically: um, M R James on Facebook. M R. Yeah, I messaged him before with some questions. He's awesome. Okay, I'll have to look him up. Do I not know? I, I usually he know. is uh a writer and he wrote for bowhunting.com for years he has several books out okay. mr james i will have to look that person up because becca said he's good um and that's good enough for me um so i'll look him up uh all right, and then uh, and then we talked about a little bit about your gear. And then, are you using a bow? Are you using bow quiver? You got a bow quiver on your? Oh uh, yes, I do. Yes. What, who uses that? Uh, I use a Selway. Okay, cool. Seems to be the preferred go-to uh, product. For They're people. awesome. I've tried all sorts of quivers, and they are the only ones I can say that I love. So, Selway, and they fit the they fit your wooden arrows, no problem. Yes. Um, they have like, they have different sizes for different, they have a longbow one, they have a, a recurve one, they have different sizes for your arrows and yeah, everything's yeah, perfect. Hey, so, um, you're using uh, cedar shafts? Yes, I am. Where are you getting those from? Uh, I get them from Three Rivers Archery. Okay. And they actually have, um, a really cool test kit you can order for wood shafts where they send you out four different spines and you can see which one is good for your bow and whether you like them or not. And then you can order whichever one is correct for you. Yeah, that's really, that's really cool. I mean, it's, it's kind of a crapshoot, right? When you're shooting wood arrows, because they're natural material. So it's nice, yeah. that they, it's nice that they have something like you can, that you can do that with. Um, that's interesting. Yeah, because I ended up with a heavier spine that I originally would have ordered. So it was nice to be able to shoot them and see which one actually shot well out of my bow before placing the order yeah yeah bragging I, I i get it you can hold back more weight than i can i get that <laughs> yeah, it's I, I get it i need to brag about it right it's like a, yeah i can pull 50 pounds back i mean, I, mean I, I, got a, I have a 46 pound long bow. i'm like that's that's a, that's a lot <laughs> anyway it's nice to be young um so that that's really that's really cool um three rivers has been doing a great job um with that and you seem to be uh, yeah i've been a customer of theirs for years before i even had social media so it was kind of cool to be able to work with them after being a customer for so long yeah nice guys um nice guys over there and, and especially again i i've had jonathan on the show too and i said hey look at you know it's yes i remember that one 
so it's so it's so cool to to you know talk to someone who's been putting so again just like you i mean really big icons of the archery community it's it's so nice to have all you guys on here so and, and kind of spread the word i think the more we get people into the sport the better um oh i agree yeah it's just yep. it's better for everyone right yep i agree have, have you uh now do you have friends that you constantly bug and say hey you need to do traditional archery um not i mean not really i don't I moved here a couple of years ago and I still don't, <laughs> don't really know that many people locally. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I'm sure a lot of people know you. They probably don't even know you guys are na that you're neighbors, uh, but. Uh, That's probably, probably true. I mean, like, I don't, it's going to sound bad. I don't get out that much. Like if I go out, it's usually to the woods and you're not, you're on, or I'm really going to meet any friends there. <laughs> you, yeah. It's, it's really creepy if you meet people in the woods. I'm just going to tell you. That. Really yeah. Creepy. Really yeah. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Um, so, so any advice for people that are new into archery? Like, um, yes. Um, this is particularly for people that are trying to get into traditional archery, but it can go for everything. Um, I wish someone had told me this when I started out is just because you're doing it different than everyone else doesn't necessarily mean it's wrong because you have to find what specifically works for you. Yeah. I mean, yes, you have to maintain consistency and proper form and everything like that, but you may, you know, be an instinctive shooter or a gap shooter or something else and be different from the next person. And that's okay. Yeah. That's a great, that is a great message. It's okay. If you're shooting single string, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Just get out and do it, right? Like I, I we need to we need to again grow the sport. We need to yep. not gatekeep on people and say, well, you know, if you're not shooting a south bow, you're not a real traditional archer. You know, we, we yeah. just need to we need to pump everyone up. That's that is that getting out there and practicing. It's they call it a struggle stick for a reason, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, we're all going through our own battles. We're all going through our and own battles. It's funny too. Um, you go into all these trad groups and forums online and I feel like a lot of people overthink it. They want to make it more complicated than it really is. And it doesn't have, it doesn't have to be complicated at all. No, no, it does not. Um, pick a spot and, uh, and put it there. Yep, exactly. <laughs> Hey, well, thanks very much for joining us. I know that you're a busy person and you're, you've got a busy household and you're, 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 you're providing for the family. I, I really do appreciate you, honestly. Uh, thanks for having me. I'm glad we could finally figure out a time to make it work. Yeah, this is great. Thank you so, so much. And for anyone that's listening along, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, do all those social media things. It's really cool. Uh, it helps out the channel. Um, you know, I just want to make sure, you know, we're, we're getting to the end of this thing. Uh, just be safe out there. Um, and, uh, you know, if you get time, if you get time, check out Becca's channel. Actually, I just go there. Just go there right now. And just, <laughs> again, I don't know who hasn't already, but if you have, if you haven't, please uh, uh, follow her. Anyway, thanks very much, everyone. We'll talk to you soon.